Hello, I'm Dr. Francis Pitsilis. You've heard people say, if you have a good diet, you've got all the nutrients you need. Well, I'm not sure that that's true. What sort of soil is it grown in? Do you have a good diet all the time? I don't. Most people don't. Um, how long have the vegetables been in the refrigerator? And have you got an illness? Yes. Various conditions can cause nutrient depletion and helping to correct any vitamin deficiency helps that condition to get better. What are the conditions? Well, before we go into that, the susceptibility for nutrient de depletion occurs by genetic predisposition. Yes, it's true. One in five people have poor methylation and that involves um, a whole lot of B vitamins and some people inherit the vitamin D deficiency gene. Yes, I bet you didn't know that. It also depends on dietary habits, whether you're stressed, because a lot of your B vitamins, magnesium, zinc, vitamin C um, are depleted. Um, lifestyle factors like smoking. If you smoke, you're going to use up all your antioxidant vitamins like vitamin C and vitamin E, and a natural antioxidant that you make called glutathione. What about environmental exposures, um, toxic chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals? If you're a tradesman, you might be exposed to a whole lot of things. There are diseases that cause nutrient depletion. And of course, there are drugs and surgery. So when it comes to surgery, the common one that causes nutrient depletion is anything to do with the bowel. And so bariatric surgery or weight loss surgery can cause a deficiency of vitamin D, iron, vitamin B12 and fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, vitamin E and vitamin K as well as magnesium. These people also get an overgrowth of unwanted bacteria in their small bowel that we call SIBO. There can be protein deficiencies in people who've had bariatric surgery or bowel surgery um, as well, which is important to be aware of, and a whole lot of other deficiencies. Now, when it comes to diabetes, that's almost the king of deficiencies. Zinc, magnesium, and they're required to lower blood sugar, but also cholesterol. Chromium, chromium helps you to burn fat it increases DHEA, which is the quality of life hormone in, in your body, and it stops you craving sugar. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, manganese, which is very important as an antioxidant. Selenium, another antioxidant. B1, B6, B3, B7 or biotin. Carotenoids. The more carotenoids you have, the lower your blood sugar uh, becomes and carotenoids are the red and orange pigments in fruits and vegetables like tomatoes, pumpkin and carrot. Vitamin C and vitamin E. So with diabetes becoming a lot more common, it's something like 30% of people over 65, we need to be aware of this. Now what about older people? We're all living longer. Um, we may not have the quality, but we are living longer. So what happens in older people? Well, in studies, we have found that they have had a lot more colds and flus, diarrhea and pneumonia. And this has been because of the deficiencies, common deficiencies of iron, vitamin C, vitamin D, because they don't go outside enough, B6, B12, folic acid and zinc. Zinc is in animal-based foods. So... If they're eating bread and jam or anything that's handy and not enough animal-based foods, they're going to be low in zinc. Not only that, but older people may not have enough gastric acid to help them digest. So what about mental illness? That's quite common too. It's a little bit hidden, isn't it? But it's there everywhere. What's important in this area are fish oil, zinc, folic acid, magnesium, and many other vitamins and minerals. And what about celiac disease and inflammatory bowel disease? They're all bowel diseases. Well, they will all have an array of vitamin deficiencies. 
often because their bowel's not working properly to absorb their vitamins. And we also need a good gut flora to make some of our B vitamins. And last but not least, what about Alzheimer's disease? Well, some of the easiest things to fix in Alzheimer's disease that are able to reverse any cognitive decline include B vitamin deficiency and thyroid. But when it comes to vitamins, what we're really interested in are the sort of vitamins that protect the brain, like antioxidants that help the brain to work, and the B vitamins, including vitamin B12. In addition, we've got selenium, vitamin C and E because they help each other with their antioxidants and not enough zinc because often people with Alzheimer's disease have too much copper and copper and zinc balance each other. As we get older we get zinc deficient and copper dominant. We don't want that so we have to supplement some, some zinc. I think I've mentioned vitamin D, it's really important. B vitamins B12 deficiency is present in 40% of neuropsychiatric conditions. And if I haven't already mentioned it, fish oil is very important as well. So, as you can see, if you have a chronic illness, it's really important to think about the fact that you might be deficient in something. A lot more if it's got to do with your bowel, but also if you're getting older and if you've got diabetes. Perhaps a good strategy, would, which would be to do the basics, a good multivitamin, some vitamin C and some fish oil. And then consider whether you might need zinc and magnesium, and you can test for things like iron, B12 and vitamin D. And I hope that information is useful.